Welcome everyone to Politic NY's newest video interview series in the community with sponsored by AARP. My name is Elizabeth Aloni and today we'll be in the community with council member Camila Hanks. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> council member Hanks. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Happy Hi. holidays. Happy holidays to you. So let me let everyone know that Council Member Hanks represents Council District 49, which is made up of nearly the entire North Shore of Staten Island, including the neighborhoods of Stapleton, West New Brighton, Port Richmond, Sunnyside, St. George, Mariners Harbor, New Brighton, Clifton, Arlington, Graniteville, Livingston, Tom's, Tompkinsville, Randall Manor, Silver Lake, and parts of Concord and Rosebank. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Thank you for representing all of those people. So let me know, what is one of your accomplishments during the last year that you're most proud of? Well, when I ran for office, you know, we ran on, you know, public safety and we ran on creating a master plan. So I think one of my biggest accomplishments is that we've taken big steps in the revitalization of the North Shore waterfront, which is really a cornerstone of my campaign and a crucial part of my North Shore plan. I welcomed the mayor of um, economic and workforce development, Ms. Maria Torres Springer and various New York City agencies. Someone said, it's like, how did you get all of these agency these commissioners out at once and it's like that is really the goal and we're looking at um, projects that have pretty much been defunct and so we're really making headway on making sure that we have waterfront accessibility so i'm most proud of the fact that i'm kind of falling in line with the things that i promised and we're working diligently to make those happen and i think that the, uh, my constituents will be very very pleased at some of the new developments that will come out of that that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you for that hard work. So I have a question from our sponsor at AARP, and they want to know that, you know, the city's Department for the Aging, which supports a wide range of programs designated for older residents, receives approximately 0.05% of the budget, despite mm -hmm. the fact that over 20% of city residents are over the age of 65. So what will you prioritize in the next New York City budget to ensure that more resources go to the population and in what specific programs will you increase investment? Well, it's um, I'm really glad you asked that question because the Department of the Aging and, and our seniors are probably one of the most important pieces of you know our constituency in New York City proper. So I'm always, even in this budget and the last budget, I will be advocating for funding for the Department of, of Aging and encourage the administration to fill any gaps that exist with the current you know, um, Department of the Aging budget. You know, we need to close those gaps. I look forward to seeing the increased budget um, that the council will support in the senior initiatives, senior programs, and enhanced you know, initiatives that really involve our seniors. Um, we really value our, um, our senior centers and they're so much in need and housing, 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 whether they're young people, whether, you know, whatever economic, socioeconomic space you're in, but particularly if you're a senior, housing has always been an issue. So we really want to focus on that as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Looking ahead, we're right around the corner to 2023. So what is your top goal for your community in the new year? Well, it's always going to be public safety. Mm. It's always going to be, I call them the four S's of what it really makes a great district and that's public safety. So safety, sanitation, um, schools, and everyone cares about speeding. So those are like the bread and butter issues that we always wanna take care of. But the things that I'm mostly um, interested in, it's my passion is definitely um, development of our uh, waterfront and waterfront accessibility. And, and really creating housing for young people. A lot of people talk about housing. We talk about it for seniors, but those are the two spaces that we really need to focus on housing for young people, housing for seniors, um, making sure that they don't leave the great neighborhoods that they were born in. 
Fantastic. So another question from AARP, our sponsor, about is about ageism, because ageism does permeate all aspects of life for New York residents, from ageism in the workplace, how we design streets and public transportation, to how services are promoted and access. So what's one ageism issue that has an impact on your community specifically, and how would you address it? Well, um, we were just talking about that. First of all, I'm 50 years old. I'm one of the oldest council members. <laughs> and uh, so ageism is something that affects me as well. Uh, but, you know, our, our city is facing, again, a big housing crisis, especially affordable housing for our older adults who are not, you know, immune to being um, left out of that conversation. So bring, bringing more senior housing to both District 49 and the entire city is as a priority of mine. And on a local level, the Staten Island Borough President Vito Fasella and I are working together to bring senior housing opportunities to the North Shore. But it's also the little ancillary things that are, uh, we're sending um, some of our, one of our senior centers to Radio City Music Hall so they can see the Rockettes. It's those small things that let them know that they're not forgotten, making sure they have proper health care. So housing and health are really huge for um, our seniors, but it's also the small things that make them um, let you know that they're considered, that, they're, that we appreciate them. And so that programming is really important as well. Wow, that's a great way to make sure that that the positivity is permeating, not just yeah, you know, it adds to long life and longevity. You know, a little bit of that didn't hurt anybody. So we have to make sure that we we include them in some of those really awesome like trips and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful. So what would you say is really the number one issue that you hear most from your constituents? Well, well, as I said before, constituents are all about the bread and butter and sanitation. Definitely, uh, those are the calls that come to our office most frequently. Most frequently, um, people think that you know a, a city council member is you know while we are passing bills and we are working in the budget and we're dealing with land use. The general public just wants their garbage to be picked up. They want their, their neighborhoods to be clean because that's like a cornerstone of a healthy community is making sure that it's clean. And we do have some issues with illegal dumping, but um, I would say that uh, sanitation, I would say take up about 65% of our, the people who reach out to the city council office. Wow, it's something that you don't necessarily think of, but if it's not being taken care of, you can't- 100%, help. you know it's there, trust right. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. wow, amazing, amazing. Clean, safe communities, that's what people care about. Absolutely. So I have a rapid fire question for you. And, and ah. it's easy to answer. It's not easy to answer because there are so many wonderful people that you work with, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could name a person or a team that you've worked with this past year who you'd like to give a special shout out to, someone who's not usually recognized, who would that be? Oh, goodness, and there's so many. Hey, let's shout out. I know well, it's hard. I, there's so many wonderful. It's people. not going to be one person, but it's going to be um, my civic leaders who really have helped me. Uh, Priscilla Marco, who runs the Van Duzer Street Civic, uh, Man Mario Bonavaggio, uh, who does Port Richmond. He's, he heads up Port Richmond Civic Association, Port Richmond Strong, and Eileen Harrington, who's just coming in on the St. George Civic. And these guys have made sure that the issues that are really uh, close to people in these uh, various neighborhoods that they bring that to the forefront. And I have to say that, you know, you're a good as council member as people who are you're working with. Um, so of course my team is great, but those civic leaders, they're really um, have been my backbone and have really opened my eyes to what's going on, to issues that people care about on the everyday issue. So I wanna just thank them very much for all their hard work. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, so much appreciated to be, be able to give them that shout out. So thank you yeah. for that. And, and thank you for that. I thought it would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending some time with us in the community with council member Hanks. We truly appreciate it. Thank you to our sponsor AARP and uh, wishing you a very happy new year, council member Hanks. Happy holidays and happy new year. Thank, thank you. you so much for this. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.